Okay. Right, we're ready to go. My name is Margaret Calvert. This is my life in design. I always loved art, absolutely was passionate about it, and always spent a lot of time drawing. Um, so I was lucky enough to go to a school that recommended that I should go to art school. So again, that came from my school. In the final year, um, Jock Kinnear, um, well, everyone knows who he was and is and was, um, was invited to come in to one, one day a week to give the illustrators some idea of what graphic design was about. And graphic design then didn't exist as, as, a, as a, uh, a term. It was called commercial art. I imme immediately latched on to what he was all talking about when he talked about design and packaging and design projects really, which the other illustrators weren't at all interested in, but I suddenly became passionately interested in and I started um, getting in early on time. So he obviously thought I was, you know, very industrious and keen. And then right at the very end, when I wasn't at all sure what to, what I wanted to, to do, um, and it would probably have been followed up by a year's teaching course, um, he just wandered in and, and he said, oh, I've got this big job um, to design the signs for Gatwick Airport and um, I need help. Um, would you be interested in being my assistant? Not exactly those words. And oh, gosh, what a what wonderful, I mean, for your tutor to invite you to um, assist him, be his assistant. So, you know, that was it, settled. And so that was the moment I thought, yes, there's something in this design. And um, that was it, I'd begun. Well, when I started working with, with Jock, that would have been 1957. He was commissioned in, in 1957 redesign a completely new system for the United Kingdom road signs. And it started with simply the motorways only. I mean, they'd been thinking about motorways for ages, but Britain, because of the war, was behind and Germany got, got the autobahns first. So we were following them. And so all over the country, there were these, these roads being made and fields being disrupt up and things like that because it was the um, driving was chaotic it took you ages to actually get from a to b um, so they needed the motorways so there was an absolute need there um, so that all went ahead and immediately after that would have been um, the early 60s they thought well these are working so well why don't we look at the whole system so that wasn't the initial thought so that's when the all-purpose roads were considered as well. So that they relate the whole system. It was it was almost natural that um, one followed the other. By then, it, the pressure was so much that we, there were other designers joined us, and some of them also did one or two of the pictograms. But I was responsible mainly for the school children one and the um, roadworks one. There's a whole story about that, you see. Humphrey Ocean, do you know him? He'd seen my man, the, the pictogram of the man at some event, and he thought it was well drawn. And I felt very flattered by that. And he wanted to ask me to do something um, at, for the Royal Academy, for his room that he was curating. Tracy Emin was also doing one. You can imagine what hers was like. Yeah, it was great, yeah. And so um, he came and we talked about it there. And I just suddenly thought, um, why don't I just paint out the man and put me in it? And But the point was, it wasn't a feminist statement. It was simply saying that women should also do the hard work, but people read it differently. 
So that's how that came about. And then I also did all the animals, like the cow and the, the deer and, and the horse. Coming over from South Africa, we were driven down to these cousins who had a farm. And of course, they had cows. They all had names and Patience was one of the cows. So I based the cow on Patience. I think this is because of the life drawing. I just had developed the skill. And it also relates to designing um, letter forms because it's the same thing really. To actually get what we were doing approved, we would have to do prepare maquettes and they would be about that size. And these would be presented to the committee and they would make a, a comments on it. That was the initial beginning. I actually had the very daunting experience of going to um, one of these um, presentations. I mean, women weren't meant to be in such positions at that time. Although, you know, I, I was generally accepted once people knew what I was about. And I had to present my design to the committee which I just stood, held it up, and they're all sitting there, about 12 of them. And they were quite rude, actually. They said, oh, it looks like a diver coming out of, you know, things like that, because I got the head too big or something. So, of course, after they made these remarks, you went back and you um, worked at it again, and then you made another presentation. So this all went over on for quite a long time until they were eventually tested for real on road signs by the Road Research Laboratory. Finally, in 1965, they were ratified by government and could be applied. What tools do I use? Well, I use my hands and one use cow gum, a special gum a lot, to, to stick letters down and things like that, and gouache designers' colours, lots of mixing of paints, and of course pencils and repeater graphs. Everything's changed so quickly from the 60s to the 70s, 80s, 90s, and computers all coming in. And I have always loved coloured pencils, and I still use them. Well, I use them a lot now, and that goes back to my childhood because I used to love colouring in colouring in books, a drawn outline, and I, I worked terribly hard at keeping within the, the black line. Challenges that I faced, uh, well, I can remember what Jock said, and I said, well, what would be involved? And he said, um, nothing like you do here. So I knew it was going to be all new. So I learnt on the job and a lot of it was doing art, what we call artwork and all hand done because there were no computers then at all. I just learnt on the, on the job and I mean I think my enthusiasm carried, carried the day. And I think what, what was good about him is that if you had an idea that he thought was, you know, was really great, then you went along with that. So of course I was very compet. I think I still am a bit competitive, actually. I compete against myself, so that keeps me getting up in the morning. I work in chaos and layers. You see, you've got to sort of have a bit of mess. This is my this is my comfort zone, right? This is my iPad, which is really great for taking photographs. I mean, that's my process of working. Any little rough drawing in that, I photograph and I can see where I'm at and can refer back to them. What's important for me now in a, in a pro professional capacity is I do, from the conceptual point of view, in terms of ideas, I will do things by hand. And if they need colour, they'll be coloured in. So I use pencils a lot. It's got to be the right pencil, you know. 2B might be too hard, 6B probably too soft and then I um, am very lucky in that I have friends I call them friends who do all the digital work so 
Um, I, I will email a concept sometimes and it makes me work very hard at the explanation and then the image comes back um, and then I say oh no a little bit more space there colors colors absolutely well I don't say it's hopeless but the colors not quite right and um, that's how, that's how I work it's it's a thinking process you know what isn't working once you can decide what isn't working and that you can make it better that's a starting point. This is, for me, a typical worksheet. When I'm thinking about, I'm trying out different colors there because I can't get, get the right hue. I'm writing things in my, that are applied to another job. So, um, and then there's a video I'm making that's all about there, but some things I haven't done. Then I'm trying to relate it to a, a keyboard. Well, I mean, just crazy ideas, but they all sort of, come and then suddenly something takes shape because I haven't quite finished this. My favorite is always the last project. So, you know, would you like me to show it to you? This is based on, which is the where, right way where This is, this is, this is it. That's the little maquette that inspired my watch face. And then that you see is the relationship between the sign and the watch. <laughs> That's what gave me the idea. I mean, just suddenly ideas, you sort of look and then it's instant and you've got to do it. <laughs> and so it's always very satisfying if you can not just please yourself, but more than just you. Yeah, but you've got to please yourself first. Milton Glaser and Saul Bass, they were the two greats for me, but that was in my professional years. But early, uh, very early on, when I was just interested in art, I was inspired by, I was lucky because I had very good art teachers. So I was really encouraged a lot. And the thing that he absolutely said to do was to draw and from observation and draw everything and anything, what's ordinary as well as extraordinary. I have this belief that everybody has it in them but they're not encouraged because if you look at child art when they're not taught anything when they're just allowed to do and there are all these powder paints all mixed up they do lovely stuff that breaks any rules that are being conceived about good portraiture or whatever so i think as as you grow older you can lose that and it's very important to hold on to those initial feelings that you had that were all your own. You've got to love what you're doing, but I would say not necessarily a good idea to say I'm going to be a, a graphic designer or I'm going to be an architect. Or Do a foundation course and if it's a good one and you can get it, get in on a good one because they're highly competitive. That's what you should do and go to the go around art schools and look at them and talk to the students and that way you, you'll, you'll find out what it's about. I mean I learned so much from my job as head of graphic design, design for a short period at the Royal College of Art. So I learned more from the students than I imparted to them. So you know school is a learning process. I just think some, somehow de destiny, you, I think you're almost set up to go. I've just had to, I've been given opportunities and it's, it's, it's about making choices and saying, I'm not going down that path, so you choose a path. Um, so, you know, I've, I've done lots of wrong things, mistakes, whatever you like to call them. I don't want to be regretting what I've experienced. That's just life. Design for me is, it's a process, We're obviously starting in the, your mind. It, it's, it's head, heart and hand, basically. It's basically about improving things. So you look at something and um, you break it down, you analyze it, and you have an idea of how one can do that better. 